Hey, what's up guys? So, I want to talk about being a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player. Now, um, I used to play in MLG a lot, like, the, they had tournaments for Halo, and, um, I kind of want to talk about this before I get into Yu-Gi-Oh, because I want to, like, establish, like, what a pro, in my opinion, is as far as, like, a general definition. I feel like a pro is someone, essentially, that can win tournaments back-to-back -back and make a living off of it, because in Yu-Gi-Oh, even if you win back-to-back -back every YCS, can you make a living off of it? If you lived in a third world country, maybe, because, like, you get what, and I don't know what you get the prize pool now, but, like, it used to be, like, uh, a game console or an iPad, and then you get, like, your mat, you get some sleeves, maybe, oh, not some sleeves, packs sometimes, and, um, you get a binder sometimes. I'm not sure if they still do the regional binders. I know, I have one. But, um, that said, um, yeah, like, even if you win all these tournaments, you can't make a living off of Yugo simply by just being really good at this game. Um, and that's kind of unfortunate, like, I really wish the prize pool was higher. Like, in Halo, like, you know, over the season course, it was, like, $200,000. Like, that, yeah, that, that's enough to make, you know, a decent amount of, you know, uh, you know, that's a decent amount of money to, that you can wear, you can probably live off of it. Uh, you, if you're just, you know, just winning all these tournaments, you can get sponsorships. But Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't have, a, like, support as far as, like, sponsorships, really. Like, I know that there's ARG games, which, you know, I think they, they, they sponsor players, but I'm not really sure, like, what their contracts and stuff are as far as that. But that said, um, I don't think that, you know, they can essentially play these, pay these Yu-Gi-Oh players, even if they're winning in first place, enough to make a living off of the game. Which is kind of unfortunate, but I hope in the future they will. <laughs> so that'd be pretty awesome. Uh, the prize pool for Yu-Gi-Oh really needs to get bigger. But, uh, where I'm getting at is, like, even if you're winning tournaments, like, my, myself, uh, even though I've, I've, you know, I got first place at original with it in Zactors, did I think I had a lot of skill in this game? No. I, I, I mean, I was playing Zectors, and, like, I, I bag on all these decks, like, uh, like, I, I make fun of people that play wind-ups, uh, like, Macro Rabbit, but even myself that's played, in, like, in Zectors, and I top, did I, did I think I have skill? No, I, I was like, like, I really felt like, you know, I really didn't deserve this, but then again, I was playing against people that had, you know, where they were playing Rabbit, and the thing is, like, if you're playing Rabbit, like, your deck is pretty, like, linear, too, it's like, if you have Rabbit, summon Rabbit, set as much back row as you can to try to protect Loggy and, you know, stun your opponent. Uh, and that's fine. Like, that's just how Yu-Gi-Oh! is as far as the game. Like, uh, as much as, like, I love playing these fun decks, if I would go to a tournament and I'm taking the game seriously, yeah, of course I'm going to play a turn one deck. Because, you know, you go there to essentially win. You don't go to a tournament going, man, I just want to have some fun um, to lose. Uh, I mean, I don't have that much fun when I lose. But, uh, I mean, if you have fun playing the game, that's completely different. That's totally cool. But, um, you know, if you want to just go to a tournament, uh, I don't really know if it's the best idea as far as going to the tournament with, like, a really, uh, funny deck. You can troll, like, if you wanted to play, I guess, Final Countdown, and, like, those decks, those decks can win. They've actually topped, too. But, uh, I mean, those are still serious, like, you know, troll decks, essentially. But if you're playing something like, I don't know, Ojamas, and there's gonna be someone going, Ojamas are so good, what are you talking about? Oh, that's cool, I don't think Ojamas have topped, uh, in, like, so long. I don't know if they've ever topped, but that said, um, yeah, I really don't feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game where you can essentially make a living off of it by just winning. And that's kind of where I'm getting at. Even if you, like, you won all like, the YCSs back to back, um, and even if you, like, you're winning, like, what are these players using? Like, it's called Macro Rabbit and Zector. Like, even myself, I, I, I kind of I make fun of myself all the time for being awful at this game and playing like, in Zector when I top. But that said, like, it doesn't really matter as far as um, you know, winning with these decks that are way too good, because that's essentially what Yu-Gi-Oh! is. It's not a really a balanced card game. And I, I hope in the future it becomes a balanced card game, but I don't realistically know if that will ever happen. Uh, I hope that, that there's another League of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and uh, hopefully in the future there'll be like a different like uh, list where it's like, it's, it's a list where like the game is uh, catered towards more like skillful and balanced, uh, like a gameplay uh, style. But at the moment I really feel like, you know, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! is kind of like unbalanced. And Yu-Gi-Oh! has been unbalanced pretty much for as long as I can remember. I mean, Lightsworn, like, I remember that deck came out, and I was like, wow, this deck isn't fair at all. Like, I'm pretty sure JD came out at 2, and look, JD's at 3. Like, if JD's at 3, and th that deck still doesn't win, like, I I'm still, like, surprised. Like, if you, if you told me back in the day JD would go to 3, I would never believe you. <laughs> and then I remember how they hit Necrogard into 1, which is random. But, you know, Necrogard is at 3 again, J Judgment Dragon is at 3. I'm just like, how does the deck not win? But, like, I understand why it doesn't win, because, like, Macro Rabbit is, like, the most popular deck right now. But, uh... Going back to pro at Yu-Gi-Oh! The thing is, um, like, even, like, I'm gonna give an example. Uh, Robert Boyajin, uh, him and Cesar Gonzalez are one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! players. Like, I think they're really great Yu-Gi-Oh! players. But, uh, there was a time where, uh, I believe it was Robert Boyajin, he played against Malefic Skill Drain. And when your opponent has a 4,000 attacker and Skill Drain on the field, and they got, like, Gear Town, and so if you blow it up, they get a 3,000 meter out, and they still have, um, 
you know, well, actually, if they if they blew up Gear Town, uh, the Malefic wouldn't die because of Skill Drain anyways, but you'd still get, like, a 3,000 attacker. But that said, um, I really felt like Robert is, like, a really good player. And the thing is, and I'm not, to, not to talk bad about the player that was playing, like, Malefic Skill Drain, but the thing is, like, did they make any plays that you were really thoughtful? No, it was kind of just like, okay, Skill Drain, Malefic, oh, let's go 4,000, and you can't do anything. And so, until you have MST to get rid of my Skill Drain, you can't make really make any moves. And that's kind of unfortunate. But that said, um, the Malefic Skill Drain player, I believe he did win uh, versus Robert Boyajian. I don't remember what YCS this was, but this is when plants were like one of the the biggest decks. And I really liked that that format. I thought that was a really cool like Tengu plant format. Even though like one for one Dandy and then Tengu, like you got sacked so hard when your opponent ever did that. But um, also, there's a point when Gateway was at three. That was ridiculous as well. Like Gateway at one is still like if they have Gateway, they win. But if they have three Gateway, wow, it's like. Uh, yeah, I wish uh, I played Samurais during that format. I played it when uh, Sheehan was at, I think, what was it? I remember Gateway was at 1, but then, like, I don't know, Smoke Signal was at 3, Sheehan was at 3 still. I don't know, I just remember uh, I didn't get to play with, uh, Samurais when Gateway was at 3. But that said, um, that was a really insanely, like, overpowered deck. Like, I'm sure everyone agrees, even the players playing 6 Samurais. Uh, even now, like, if you open up Gateway, you still, like, win 6 Samurais, pretty much. As long as you can summon, like, 2 monsters, <laughs> uh, which isn't that hard to do, really. But, uh, that said, um, where I'm getting at with this video <laughs> is essentially, I, I don't feel like a pro player is someone that can just, like, you know, win all the tournaments all the time. Uh, and also with Yu-Gi-Oh!, you can't essentially make, like, a play that's, like, the perfect play. Uh, everyone misplays, I'm, I guarantee you, even, like, these players, like, Billy Brake, uh, Cesar Gonzalez, um, Alistair, um... I don't know, just like all these good players, essentially, uh, that like win these tournaments, I'm sure that they've, mis that they've misplayed during a tournament, uh, and that could be caused because their opponent has a face down MST and they're like, well, I have game, but I don't want to go for game because if that face down is a torrential, I will lose. So they don't make these plays and they end up losing because their opponent, you know, you know, they, they allow their opponent to have like an extra turn where if they didn't have that turn, they would have won. And that's kind of like, kind of a problem with Yu-Gi-Oh, but it kind of goes with the mind games of like setting like, you know, setting like, setting Heavy Storm. Like, if I go first turn, I go set Heavy, set E-Call, and then you go, okay, he's not gonna, he's not gonna Heavy me, so I'm going to, like, set three or four face downs, and then it goes, okay, back to my turn. I go activate E-Call, search out Stratos or whatever, and then I flip up Heavy Storm, blow up everything, and then your opponent's like, oh, that's a bummer, I just got pro set heavied. Like, that's kind of, not necessarily, like, a, like, bad thing you do, because, you know, if you're setting Heavy, you're kind of risking losing Heavy. But at the same time, you could definitely capitalize off of your opponent for thinking you have something that you don't have. Whereas if you take a game, um, like I said, I used to like play Halo with MLG and stuff like that. Um, you take a game like that where uh, both players are on equal grounds essentially. Like if the map is like symmetrical and um, you know there's like you know power weapons that are in the middle of the map where you know pretty much you have an equal opportunity to grab these items and stuff like that. Um, and you know both players see each other, they shoot each other. I just feel like there's a there's a better chance that the more experienced player. Uh, essentially will win, but in these tournaments, like, everyone is pretty much experienced, so no one's gonna really, like, challenge each other, like, really hard for, like, nothing. Um, whereas Yu-Gi-Oh, you could have different hands, you can go second in the game. There's, um, decks that beat other decks, like, Malefic Skill Drain, if, if, you know, the plant player doesn't have, like, an MST fast enough, or, like, some, some other deck, I don't know, uh, that, that's, like, like, loses to Skill Drain, like, like, Wind-Ups, for example, like, Skill Drain hurts that deck, you know, quite a bit, and, um, or like goes in match or something like you could just open up a card, one card that shuts down your opponent's deck, and if they don't draw that MST or that Snowman Eater within like one or two turns, they lose. And that's kind of unfortunate with Yu-Gi-Oh. And that's why I really feel like the whole like skill thing. It's kind of hard to gauge as far as like where the player's skill lies. I mean, sure, there's definitely like misplays in the game that ha can happen. I myself misplay. Like I said, everyone misplays in the game. But what it really comes down to is, I feel like. In my personal opinion, the definition of a pro is someone that can make a living off of this game. But at the same time, I don't like to consider myself pro because, yeah, I make uh, partially my living off of Yu-Gi-Oh. I can do everything off of just, you know, um, Yu-Gi-Oh if I wanted to. I could, I could definitely just make my living off of Yu-Gi-Oh. But the thing is, do I consider myself pro? Kind of, but not really. Like, I, I kind of consider myself pro in the sense that I can make a living off this game. But do I consider myself a pro as far as making the best plays at every moment? No, not at all. Um, I, I make awful plays all the time, and I realize these uh, misplays, and then I essentially learn off of those. And I think that that's still good, but the thing is, back to where I'm getting at, is I don't consider someone pro even if they win all the tournaments, because you can't make a living off of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's kind of essentially what... Um, 
this video is about as far as like my definition of a pro because everyone I could say has their own definition of a pro in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Whereas you compare it to something like Halo where someone wins all these tournaments and they make their living off this game. Yeah, then you know, they're making like, you know, they make a million dollars. I don't think you can make a million dollars off of Halo, actually. But if you make enough money is what I'm getting at, at a certain game and you make your living off of it, yeah, there's, you know, a lot of people would say, yeah, they would agree with you, yeah, that person's pro. But even if you topped every YCS in a row, like Simon He, uh, like, that guy's been topping every, like, YCS, but can he make his living off of just topping those YCSs? Probably not, because you gotta pay for your flight, you gotta pay for a hotel. It's more, like, even if you win these tournaments, are you making that much money? Not really, it's more for just bragging rights than really anything. And when it comes down to it, who, who, who's really uh, able uh, to brag more? The person that is, like, playing for cards and making more money, and, like, you know, uh, making money off of just Yu-Gi-Oh! in general, like myself, or someone that just wins a tournament. Like, you guys kind of got to weigh your options that. And I kind of want to know, what do you guys think makes a, a pro Yu-Gi-Oh! player? Maybe that you think my definition is correct. Maybe someone that makes a living off of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, is, is, can be considered pro, because a lot of people consider, like, pro athletes anyone that makes their living off of, you know, what they do. But there's also the players that think that, you know, you got to be winning every tournament. Um, and, you know, with Yu-Gi-Oh, that's kind of that's hard to do. But even if you did, would you make enough money to make a living? Uh, in my opinion, no. Unless you live in a third world country, then yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, let me know what you think makes a pro player, like a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player. Not pro player, a pro like Yu-Gi-Oh player. Because pro player, you know, uh, with other games and stuff, I just want your definition of a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player. Because that's what the video is about. And yeah, I hope this video was fun for you guys because I get asked all the time, uh, you know, are you a pro Yu-Gi-Oh player? And I kind of just say yes and no. I say yes and I tell my definition of it. And then I'm like, but no, because I'm awful at this game and uh, there's so many things that you can't really factor in because like drawing cards, it's a card game. But anyways, hope this is fun for you guys and I hope they make that price support better for Yu-Gi-Oh! And then that way I would definitely, like if they make the price pool like 500,000 for Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, that's probably too much. Maybe like 10,000 for each YCS. Or maybe even like 5,000 for each, like the first place at YCS. Um, I think there, there'll be a lot more players that actually like go to these tournaments thinking, you know, you know, five grand's enough for me to, you know, you know, be good for the month, I would say. And there's a lot more uh, competitiveness in Yu-Gi-Oh! And you can more so make a living off of like five grand. If they give you like five grand plus a whole bunch of other stuff and you got like your plane ticket to the next YCS, I don't know. I, I could see some players doing it. Maybe like the top eight or something. They, they, would, they would all get flight at least. I don't know. We'll see what, uh, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! has in store for us in the future, but I hope they uh, up the price uh, support uh, in the future. But thanks for watching, Asian Eyes signing out.